Hello everybody and welcome. My name is Herbert and today we will have a look at system programming in Linux by Stuart Weiss. I know it has been a while since I uploaded something to this channel, but No Starch Press reached out to me to review this book and it really sparked my interest, so here we are. If you're a developer or system engineer interested in understanding Linux at a deeper level, this book might be already on your radar. Let's break down who this book is for, what it covers, and whether it's worth your time and money. First off, this is not a beginner-friendly book. It's mainly aimed at C or C++ programmers who want to move beyond the basics of application coding, or for Linux engineers who want to understand system-level programming in more detail. So you'll definitely need a basic understanding of C. If you're coming from languages like Python or JavaScript, you won't have much of an advantage here. This book assumes you're comfortable with lower level concepts. Also, some Linux knowledge is required, at least from the user's perspective then. So being comfortable with manipulating files and navigating the file system inside the terminal are going to be a prerequisite. So overall, I would recommend it for C developers who are familiar with the Linux shell, but not for total beginners. This book makes it clear right from the start. It is not a C programming tutorial. Instead, it focuses on the Linux programming interface, exposing you to system calls, header files, libraries, and structures that make Linux applications work under the hood. Some of the most valuable subjects include I.O., meaning files, standard in, standard out, standard error, file systems, how Linux organizes and exposes its data, timers, working with time and scheduling, processes and threats, the creation, manipulation, and the differences between the two, also client-server applications, building communication between programs, creating libraries, write reusable code to share across your code base. So everything is built around writing real C code that interacts with Linux. So you will learn a whole set of tools and features that the Linux programming interface offers. How the Linux kernel works behind the scenes, the difference between system applications and regular applications, how system level programs interact with the operating system, how to use the Linux programming interface to create system applications, and also how to integrate and use various system libraries. In short, it teaches you to think like a system programmer rather than just an application developer. So here are some of my personal takeaways. The book can be challenging if you don't already know C or Linux. For C developers, it's quite approachable, but there is still a lot to learn. It's extremely detailed with lots of practical how-to sections, but also clear explanations of why things work the way they do. So it's interactive and it's definitely not dry or overly theoretical. And also the author includes GitHub code for all exercises, which makes hands-on learning so much easier. So when you're reading through the book, it really shows that the author clearly knows its stuff. And finally, I wanted to add that my copy of the printed version has a magazine-like paper texture. Some might like it, some won't. Um, I'm not quite sure if this is the paper texture that they use across the entire world. I personally live in Europe and my book was shipped from the UK, so your mileage may vary. Also, compared to an online course, the book has some big advantages. Uh, you will always have it on hand for quick reference. For me personally, this is a big advantage over online courses because I can just search for the content like I would with written documentation, for example. Might sound a little bit hypercritical coming from a guy who makes videos on YouTube, but that's just how I like it. Also, the content in this book is evergreen. These are fundamental Linux concepts that don't go out of date. So the book is a bit pricey. It's $99 on their website, but No Starch Press gave me a discount code. So I'll put that in the video description below. But regardless of the discount, I think this book is worth every penny. There's just so much information crammed into this. Now let's dive into a book sample on their website, along with complimentary code. I'm not a C developer and not a C++ developer, but I am a Linux engineer, so I hope I'll manage. But let's dive into an example. So for the code example, we'll go to the No Starch Press website. We can get the uh, sample chapter nine of the book, which we will use for this demo. And we're gonna set up this resource monitor. Well, more specifically, it is a file monitor that the author writes here. So uh, you can read through the chapter yourself. I'm just going to do the demo for you guys. Uh, you can just follow along with the code example. And if we scroll down, we'll see that he explains how to refresh the screen, how to update the file sizes, etc. 
and so these are the actual code examples with with like I said it's it really shows you the how and the why it, it, it does all these things like I said we're not gonna go over the entire uh, chapter here but we are interested in just running the program so we're gonna use the uh, GCC the GNU C compiler and we also have this complementary code here we'll need this watch files .c file uh, which contains everything we we are going to need now uh, what I'd like to do is just get this code here uh, just copy the github link and I have opened up a Alma Linux um, which is my preferred distro uh, for running things because it's I'm more of a Red Hat guy and what we'll need is we need to do sudo dnf install gcc, GCC. Uh, I'll enter my password here as you can see it's already installed and we're also going to need git so we're gonna do git clone we'll copy the repository let's go into the repository directory here and we'll see a bunch of files here now first of all we want to make sure that uh, we run this uh, make file here so to do that we just do make I noticed that there are some errors or like warnings in here I just ignored them <laughs> like, I'm not a C developer I don't know what these errors are especially at the end you'll see that there is a specific error about like a specific uh, header file that it couldn't find but you know I just ignored it uh, if you're a C developer maybe you know what's going on here um, it couldn't find the the curses.h header file so just ignored it so we're gonna just just go with it um, we want to go into chapter 9 uh, chapter 09 here and but you know it already created our executables which is fine but the author does mention that uh, you can also run this GCC command so I believe the um, the watch files should already work so we're not going to go run this the C compiler here uh, obviously running the make file already did that for us uh, and it also created a bunch of other things so if you want to play around with this feel free to do so uh, but it expects us to put in an interval and it expects us to put in a limit here and then it expects us to uh, give us a file or I think you can pass multiple files uh, so we will try to do that uh, first of all I'm going to open up my uh, tmux session here um, I yeah obviously there is no session attached because I closed this before so we're just gonna do tmux so we'll just do for I in uh, 1 to 100 uh, and we'll do um, we'll do echo a a b b oops a a b b c c c c uh, into test file one and then we'll sleep for two seconds and then we're done. So what we'll do here is we'll loop one to a hundred, so meaning that we'll run this a hundred times. And we will just um, echo this AABBCC into this test file one um, and we'll keep adding. So, you know, if, if I would do something like this, then the file wouldn't grow in size and then the program wouldn't pick up any changes. So we'll run this and we will send this to the background. Now, you, if you don't have Tmux or you don't know how it works, uh, you can just you know open a, open a secondary uh, terminal and that will work as well so we are going to just run this watch files and the interval is going to be two seconds and then we'll limit this to about uh, five times so what this will do is it will look for changes in the file every uh, two seconds right so uh, and then it will limit that uh, up to five times doesn't mean that our program will only run for 10 seconds it will only uh, run for 10 seconds if there are no changes detected. So it will try to look for changes for about 10 seconds with an interval of two seconds. If it didn't find any changes during that time, it will just stop. 
but as long as there are changes detected in the file, it should see those. So we're just going to run the program here, and we can see that the file size is growing. So we're up to 259 right now, 266. See, so the program is working because in the background, remember, we ran that bash, uh, that line of bash code there that just increased the file size gradually about for about 200 seconds. So this should uh, this should keep uh, running for about um, yeah about about 200 seconds here so we'll quit this because we obviously see that it works and we'll also um, we'll see here we'll quit this and we'll run the, f the program again and if there are no file changes detected during that time window of 10 seconds it should just quit automatically. So the file is not growing in size anymore. We're having about 10 seconds uh, passed and then it will just quit the program. So there you have it, a little bit of a code example uh, taken from chapter 09. Uh, we have created a file monitor and it works perfectly. Now, obviously I didn't go into detail. I didn't explain the how and the why, but you can just read through that chapter because the author really explains it in, uh, in detail, uh, how these things work and why you do certain things. But obviously this is chapter nine. You have already missed a bunch of chapters and there's a lot of stuff that uh, went before this chapter nine. So we're just really like diving into chapter nine. Uh, without any knowledge. So if you really want to understand this 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 chapter or you really want to understand this 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 program that we wrote, you will need to obviously read through the entire book to really understand what's going on here because there's just so much stuff that you need to learn before you actually get to this chapter nine and get to understand what's going on. Um, so if you want to pick it up, if you want to pick this book up, you can do so with a little bit of a discount. Um, no Sarge Press reached out to me and gave me the discount code for you guys. So I'll put that in the video description along with the links that we used. Uh, so if you want to pick it up, feel free to do so. If not, then I still thank you for watching this video and see you in the next one.